I'm 26 years old, and this year, I settled on a house. I'd been living with my roommates for the past almost eight years, and seclusion is something I value, so finally buying a home for myself was a huge achievement. It was in a neighboring town about two hours out from where I used to live. This town was much smaller in scale and had way less buildings. That's not to say every house was on a farm or anything, but the neighborhoods were definitely not full of close-together rows of houses. They were spread out, separated by fields of trees and grass. The home I bought was no exception, being modest and among the less expensive side of the housing market. It was out in a forest a few miles away from the market center in the town. On the day I moved in, I still hadn't met anyone in the area, not the neighbors or the townspeople, and with the house being so far out, with trees blocking the surrounding views, it really felt like I was moving out into the middle of nowhere, completely alone. Saying it like that makes it sound more eerie than it really felt, but it wasn't all that comforting of a thought either. I had a rental van for the day, so I got to work right away unloading my things into the house. To be as quick as possible, I tried to put pretty much everything right in the living room rather than sorting it as I go. This took a few hours, and the sun was coming down just as I was finishing up. I set down a few boxes in the house and started walking out to the driveway for the last couple of boxes but was caught off guard by a man standing on my porch, almost blocking the whole front door. He startled me, making me jump a bit before showing slight embarrassment and asking what he was here for. The man, looking about 50 or so, smiled and introduced himself as my new neighbor. I said it was nice to meet him and made a short smile, but couldn't really help but think about how I never saw him walking up the driveway to my house. In fact, I had no idea where he came from, given it was just forest around my house. The man stayed there, just kind of looking at me for a second, then turned and walked off my porch. I stood and just soaked in the strangeness of the encounter. After a moment though, I stepped back outside and quickly got the rest of the boxes into the house. I checked out the windows to make sure the man was gone, and I didn't see him anywhere, so after a minute I went out and got in the van, driving it down the long dirt driveway. It had only been a few minutes since the man had left, yet I didn't see him walking as I drove down to the main road. There were no other paths that I was aware of, so this made me a bit more uneasy. Anyway, I returned the van and got a local taxi back home, then started on unpacking. I wasn't working fast because I was already tired and it was late, but I wanted to get some of the furniture put together before calling it a night. I grabbed the pieces to my bed frame and lugged them into my bedroom, beginning to piece it together before a sudden knock interrupted me. I stopped and listened, kind of shaken by it. I got up and quietly walked up to the front door. I kept the door shut and locked, but looked out the peephole and saw the same man from during the day. But this time, something was off about him, more so than before. His body was shaky, with his head moving around in an uncanny way, but his eyes were fixed on the doorknob. He was staring at it intensely, standing close to the door as if waiting eagerly for me to open it. Hey, it's your neighbor. Can you open the door? He yelled, and then knocked again. I still remained on the other side, looking through the peephole. His face began to show frustration and anger, and he banged on the door one more time. He then turned and faced the pitch black forest looking out into the darkness. He held his hand up and did some sort of waving motion, followed by him running out into the forest in the direction he waved at. Terrified, I immediately called the police, but it was too late for them to be found and questioned. After that night though, I never saw the man again. Even to this day, I now have met my neighbors, and of course, none of them were that man. 
and nobody in town seems to recognize him from my descriptions. I don't know who the man was signaling to in the forest, or even how many people could have been out there, waiting for the man to gain my trust and get me to open the door. What would have happened afterwards, I believe is best left unthought of. I was driving on the empty highway, fighting to keep my eyes open. It was well past 1am, and I couldn't help but look at the GPS every few seconds, hoping the estimated arrival time would somehow go down faster. I'd been on the road for a dangerous 15 hours straight, only stopping for food and gas on the way to my new home. I'd been forced to move for work. Yet, funnily enough, it was work that never let me take a trip to see the place I'd be moving to. Finally though, I made it to the highway exit and into the town I'd be living in. It was dark, so it wasn't exactly easy to see what everything looked like, but I could see enough to tell it wasn't as good as where I'd lived before. Most of the buildings looked like locally owned and run shops that were far from what I was used to. Along with that, most of the lights were off. When I got to my neighborhood though, it wasn't all that bad. The houses were pretty regular, sectioned close to each other. I pulled up to my house and parked on the side of the road, then got out to see the place I'd be calling home for the next year. From the outside, it looked like all the others, but what really mattered was the inside. I walked up the driveway and pulled out the key I'd been sent a few days ago, putting it in the lock and turning it, but there was no click. I grabbed the handle and pressed on the door, watching it glide open. It was already unlocked. I quickly went in and looked to make sure that my things were there, as movers had dropped everything off in the morning. After a quick look, nothing seemed to be missing. I knew it was likely that the movers had just forgotten to lock the place up, but it still gave me a bad feeling. On top of all that though, the lights and electricity didn't work. I knew I had to set it up in town, and it was obviously too late at this point to do it tonight, but I didn't think they would just cut the power. I turned my phone light on and started looking through the rooms. The downstairs was okay. Pretty standard looking, but with a slightly older sort of feel to it. I made my way up to the second floor. At the top of the stairs was a long hallway with five doors. I stepped into each of the rooms one by one, shining my phone light around. They were all very small, and a lot of them had water damage on the ceiling and walls. But when I opened the door to the master bedroom, I was surprised to see a single tarp laying on the floor. It looked dirty, like maybe something the movers had used to wrap furniture with. But what made it so odd was that there was nothing at all upstairs aside from that tarp. All the furniture and boxes were downstairs. I took a step back and closed the door. I was already so tired, I just wanted this night to be over with. I really didn't want to crowd my mind with the uncertainties of moving here. I went back downstairs and sat on one of the sofa chairs that was still wrapped up in plastic and rested my eyes. My eyes jolted open as a sudden thud echoed throughout the house from above me. Honestly, I don't even know if I'd fallen asleep or not. All I remember was sitting down and closing my eyes. The sound was harsh though, not just some small thump. I stood up and went to the bottom of the stairs, looking up at the dark hallway. The house was now silent. I must have stood there for a whole minute before taking my phone out and turning on the flashlight, then slowly walking up the creaky stairs. When I got to the top of the steps and shined the light down the hallway, I immediately saw the door at the far end was slightly open, and the unmistakable outline of a figure was standing between the crack in the doorway, looking right at me. 
I almost fell backwards down the steps as my immediate reaction was to turn and run. I sprinted for the front door and straight out into the driveway and into my car. I thought about driving away, but knowing literally all of my things were inside that house, I wanted to make sure whoever was in there didn't make it out with anything. I called 911 and waited for their arrival on the side of the road. During the whole five minutes, I never saw any movement in the windows or anyone leave through the front. When the police searched the house though, the back door was wide open. It was obvious to them that whoever that was had been living inside the house probably since it had been vacant over the past couple months. At first I thought they were talking about the attic, since I'd looked through all the rooms and saw nothing but a tarp, but there was no attic. They were talking about the master bedroom, which meant that when I was looking around upstairs that night and I opened the door to that room, it's likely that the person was hiding along the wall, probably right behind the door. And if I had gone further inside the room to investigate the tarp and look around, there's a chance that I wouldn't have made it out. This happened to me three years ago when I'd moved into a small home. It was only a mile from where I was living before, so it wasn't a very unfamiliar place at all. However, it was on the side of town that I didn't really go to often, due to it having a record of crimes and just overall a bad reputation. At the time, I wasn't in a good financial place, so I had to go with the cheaper places, which happened to be in that area. The day I moved in, I didn't talk or really even see anyone. I just moved my stuff from the U-Haul into my new place. On the second day, I started the unpacking process by moving the boxes and furniture into the rooms that they belonged in. Once I got to moving my office furniture though, I saw something out the window that caught my attention. There was a man, young, like 25 years old, standing in my driveway. I watched as he just looked at the house and walked into the yard, looking into my windows from afar. Getting uncomfortable, I left the window and went downstairs to confront him, but when I opened the door and looked outside, he was already gone. Not in my yard or driveway, or even on any of the sidewalks. He'd just completely left. I waited to see if he'd come back but then shrugged it off and got back to what I was doing. Yeah, it was weird, but I didn't know what exactly I was supposed to do about it. I got my office set up, then went out to get some lunch before getting back to work on the bedroom. By 8pm, I was pretty tired. I kept on with it for as long as I could, but once 10 o'clock rolled around, I was just done for the night. The house was still a mess, but I left it as is, turning off all the lights and getting in bed. It only took a few minutes for me to fall asleep. When I woke up, I rolled my head over and looked at the clock I had laying on the floor. 3 AM. I rolled back over and closed my eyes, but a muffled sound woke me right back up. I lifted my head and listened again hearing a faint sound from downstairs. It was like something being dragged across the floor. Still in disbelief, I sat up and listened even more intently. A few seconds later, a similar sound came again. I stood from my bed and walked over to the bedroom door, opening it and looking down the hallway as I listened. But as soon as I opened the door, all the sounds stopped. I walked into the hall and over to the staircase. I went down a few steps and looked over the railing, but I didn't see anything, and the house was still completely quiet. When I got to the last step, I flicked on the light. At first, everything looked okay, nothing missing and nobody in the house. 
but then I noticed something really strange. All of the furniture and boxes that were against the walls had been pushed away, and behind them, there were several carved out portions in the wall. I felt blood rush from my face as I realized that someone had to have broken into my house and may even still be inside. I ran up to my room and called for help, but the house remained quiet the whole time I waited. What's more unsettling is that the cops couldn't figure out how the intruder gotten inside or back outside, nor did they figure out why the person broke in. The only idea is that it looks like they were looking for something in the walls. I don't know what, but there was nothing else to go off of. I think back to that man I saw standing outside my house, wondering if he was the one to have broken in. But even three years later, nothing else is known about what happened that night.